Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial. And this time with a dissolve effect. And there are different kind of approaches how you can do that. For example, to the left side, they are just based on sprites, which are just running down the image indexes. And the left ones, well, they are kind of dynamic uh, with the drawing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. This is one of Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every day a video. So let's get right into the good stuff, how we can, first of all, well, I'm just gonna say, let's do those two sprite things. They're kind of easy because, well, they're just sprites. I just call them dissolve and as you can see, I just run them through and then, well, there are quite a few. How can I do that? Well, I have a commercial product which is called Juice FX, and you can do a lot of cool things. Can I zoom in? No, I cannot. And the interesting part is it's actually been programmed partially in Game Maker Studio, so this is a neat thing. So here you just have different kind of modes, the explode you saw or the shattering, which is kind of a cool effect. And of course you can customize it in different directions, or you can do wave or strong hit and so on. And am I being sponsored by this guy? Um, no, maybe I should, who knows? Well, in any case, that stuff you can find on uh, itch.io, link in the description, and you can do a lot of stuff. I just used it for my game Clunky Souls to make some, let's say, cheap effects in there. So for example, I don't know, I wanted to shatter some object and for every object I shattered, well, I did this destruction thingy, which is kind of nice. So it saves you a lot of time and you don't have to do that everything with pixel art menu. Sometimes uh, using these kind of programs is a cool thing. So just keep that in mind, but it's not for free. So, well, you just, just to, so you know, there is, uh, well, <laughs> some money we spend if you want, actually want to use that stuff. So let's get right into the other stuff, which is player one to player three, and that these are those three guys. So first of all, as you can see, this one is dissolving from the bottom. This one is just changing its Y index and just what well, cramping in it to almost a zero. And the other one is basically changing its X and Y index with a draw event but doing a rotation and that is basically all the magic so let's get into the first one because here i use draw sprite channel and that stuff is not the regular drawing because here you have to do a few things and have to set up a few, thing, a few things which are not a standard here you have a width and the height and that is not um well something you see in in, in well draw sprite generals or just draw events because here um, it just says how much of the width and how much of the height you want to draw from the whole thing and you have four colors and for example you can make a color overlay uh, well if you like I just kept it on, on C white so there's actually nothing happening but for example you can have like let's say a tinting of blue to the top left and the top right and let's say a tinting of it's a yellow on the bottom left and the bottom right. I guess that's that's how they are. And then well, there would be some kind of color overlay to that. Actually, we can do that. Now. Why not? So let's go. Which one is it? Player one. Let's go for C. Green. Yeah, why not green? Let's make a monstrosity here. Green and a C. You can actually see that let's say see red for example if we restart this thingy here and then you should see that there is some kind of color over there i'm i'm not sure what you can use it for it's kind of cool but as you can see it it has some quirks i have seen that in a few games but the point is as you can see let's say the the, it has some absolute values, so here it's greenish or yellowish and here's reddish and then the reddish is going up and then well, the, the colors will change, so you can play around with that if you like. But well, that is 
another thing you can change in here but all you need to know is basically you have here a go away while well, your sprite then you have uh, your sub image which is zero it doesn't really matter but that's up to you and here well you have a top and left value and here i guess it's a good standard to leave it in zero zero um you don't have to do that but um sometimes for example i change those numbers and give some weird results so just keep that like that and here these are the more important things because you it just says how much of the total width of the image you want to draw so i just say 100 percent the total width and here the i just take the whole height but minus a skew value and that is basically done with an ease function yeah an ease function i know uh <laughs> hope you don't get sick of that and well here for demonstration purposes i did very long duration so you can actually well see what's going on and but for you for your game just make it a little bit shorter and then you have a start value a destination value for the well for the first one which is just dissolving uh well this thing well you um take this skew away and i guess i just did it minus 100 and at some point if you leave it it will go to a negative value and then it will redraw that thing so just um, well, play with those numbers so you get it right. And that, of course, I do with my ease function, but I don't go ease in, ease out. I just ease once in, and once the timer hits, well, the total uh, destination we are when we arrived at that. Well, in that case, go away, and um, then we, well subtract from the total height we want to draw and this is how draw sprite general actually works and though so here you just say all right how much of for example this sprite i want to draw this would be the total width and height and then it goes up but just keep in mind that it is better to make the alignment on the bottom center of course you, you can just play around with that there i guess different kind of combination the second one which is uh, this thing, just the image index and uh, the x in, the, the, the y index, just getting squashed into, I don't know, a thin line. And that is basically, again, the same stuff. But here we go from 0 to 1 because we are changing the y index. And we do that with a regular draw extent. And just say, okay, already we start with a 1 value. And then we go down to one no two uh to one because while well, we're subtracting one one from it and then it's almost like 2d flat and that's the whole magic well in ease function again bam no problem here if you're wondering what the key press space is well it's just basically resetting the whole thing so well because they once they reach a point then the ease function stuff and then well doesn't look too, too cool I just reset that stuff so you can actually see how that works and then our last but not least again a sprite extend and here i do use the skew variable again with an ease function again between zero and one in here i just make it smaller and smaller and smaller but then i add a rotation which i just put in here amount rotation let's say plus one for each step then you get well this result of course it's super super slow but you can see slowly going in here just uh, be careful because for that i use the same sprite but this time you well, align it in the center because then it would look kind of silly um just keep that in mind well that is basically it this is how you can do that of course there are more complicated ways to do that with some shaders and stuff but that is just for you so you can actually quickly implement it into your game and how can you do that well i would just suggest for you to um have a player and then he well just touches that thing or just activates it and then well you just destroy the player object because that's easier then you just clone and take the sprite of the player 
and just make it one of those transitions here. Yeah, of course you can do that in the player, but um, well, that could become a little bit more complicated and that well, can run into some problems. And here, maybe a last thing, for example, once you're entering this door or thing, then you do a little zoom in and a transition with a well, black screen and then you're pretty much fine. That, uh, if you don't know how transitions uh, work, I have a video on that. So hopefully that was of interest to you. I thought that was a pretty cool topic for one of my um, subscribers. Hopefully you are a subscriber. Um, well, <laughs> if not, well, it doesn't really matter actually. Um, well, have a good one. One up indeed.